Okay, this is a recording from class on Wednesday, October 5th, talking about the triangle review from Advanced Geometry. Okay, so our first problem is what kind of a triangle? Um, no, it's not an isosceles. It is equilateral, right? So it says, what is the length of BC? And we don't have an equation for BC, but we need to know that once we set these two sides equal, all three sides are equal. So we're gonna solve for x, plug it back in, and then that's the length of BC. Okay, so because this is equilateral, we set our two sides equal and solve for x. And then because it's equilateral, right, we plug in x into either one of these two equations, and that is the length of BC. Okay, number two, do these represent a triangle? Okay, this is a triangle inequality theorem problem and we're trying to see if 7 plus 28 is greater than 36. No. And we notice that it is not. 7 plus 28 is 35. 35 is not greater than 36. So this is not a triangle. It is definitely not a three-sided figure. Okay, that's a triangle inequality theorem type problem. Do the smaller two add up to be bigger than the larger one? A number three, what is the measure of angle B? So this is a triangle angle sum problem. So our angles add up to 180. So there's our algebra, the three angles add up to 180. And now you have to solve for X and plug it back in to find the measure of angle B. And there's your answer. X comes out to be 10. And when we plug 10 back in to find the measure of angle B, we get 62 degrees. Okay, number four. Here we have some angles, and this looks like it is a mid-segment, okay, because you have those markings on your side which says that A and C is a mid-segment. But are we asked about segments? No. Oh, no, no, we're asked about angles. So we're asked about DAC, which is here, and we're asked about angle E, which is here. Okay, so one of the things about the mid-segments are they are parallel to their bases, which means these are corresponding angles. And as such, we should set them equal. x plus 6 equals 2x minus 8. Corresponding angles are equal. So when we solve for x, we get 14. And it says, what is the measure of angle E? So you plug 14 back into our equation. And the measure of angle E turns out to be 20 degrees. Okay, number five, this is, looks like an exterior angle. Yes, this one out here is your exterior angle. So we're going to apply the exterior angle theorem and say that the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote two interiors. So the 6x plus 2 and the 10x. Okay, this is an exterior angle theorem problem, solve for x, and then plug x into here. So x equals 8, and when you plug it back in, 6 times 8 plus 2 is 50 as the measure of angle C. Okay, the next one says, what is the length of BC? So BC is called 10 times x, um, so we have to set up an equation and solve for x. So this is an isosceles triangle, which means our two legs are going to be equal. Okay, our two legs are equal. So we take 20x plus 1 and set it equal to 16x plus 45. So we can solve for x and then plug that into here. So we solve for x and get 11 and plug it in. 10 times 11 is 110 for our isosceles triangle base. So it's the same, it's the same x that I all Okay, number seven, CA is x plus 10, so this is the mid-segment, right? This is a mid-segment. And BE is 3x, so that's the base that goes along with your mid-segment. Okay, so we need to know the relationship that the base of a triangle is twice as long as its mid-segment. Or if you're so inclined, the mid-segment is half of the base. But this seems to be a much easier equation for us to use. 
So our base is 3x equals twice our mid-segments, x plus 10. Okay, so make sure you have the base and the mid-segment in the correct places so that when we solve this, 2x plus 20, we get x equals 20. Okay, so it says what is the length of BE? So if x is 20, BE is 60 units long. So when we don't see an angle, right, there's no angles on our letters, we know that this is a side length relationship, not an angle relationship. So our mid segment is twice as long, or sorry, our base is twice as long as the corresponding mid segment. Okay, let's see what else do we have. Here's a picture with some words. If measure of angle A is 2x, so angle A is right here, and angle C is 3x, that one's up here. And C to D to B, right? That's the one out here. So this must be an exterior angle theorem problem because CDB is an exterior angle. So we're going to set it up just like we did the other one where the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote two interiors. So we get x equals 18 when we solve our equation, and when we plug it in to find measure of angle A, it is 36 degrees. Okay, number nine, we have an isosceles triangle, right? It is marked as having two congruent sides, so we should know that it is an isosceles triangle. And A is 10x degrees, and B is 3x plus 2 degrees. So this is a triangle angle sum theorem problem where we have to add up our three angles because we don't know this one, right? Angle C and angle B are your base angles. If we knew those two, we could just set them equal. But because we don't know what those two are, we have to use a triangle angle sum theorem. So 10x plus 3x plus 2 plus another angle, right? We have to have three angles that add up to 180. And in this case, what is that angle going to be? Also 3x plus 2. Okay, because angle B and angle C are equal, they are base angles of your isosceles triangle. Okay, so the three angles here add up to 180. We're gonna solve and plug it back in to find the measure of angle A. So X is 11, and angle A is 110 degrees. <clears throat> so once again here, we have a mid-segment, right? It tells us that LO is a mid-segment, and this is its corresponding base. <clears throat> so the base of our triangle is equal to 2 times the mid-segment. If you will write this down every single time we have one of these problems, the chances of you getting the algebra wrong are slimmer. You can still get it wrong. It's just less likely. Oh, wait, who cares? That's not what we want. Um, ML is 4X. I was confused. 4X is ML, and LK is 10X minus 72. So this isn't a mid-segment problem at all, is it? This is a midpoint problem. Okay, so we know LL is a mid-segment. That means that LM or L, L, yes, that one and this one are equal. If L is in the middle, then these two segments get bisected. So we still want to set them equal. Oh my goodness, I started the problem without reading the whole entire thing. That is not a good practice. 12. So X equals 12. So what is the measure of MK? Well, if this is X is 12, that means this side is 48. And this side is probably 48 also because they're equal. So MK is going to have to be 96 units long. Number 11. Let's check out this word problem and see if we can draw it. Triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. Okay, which means it has two equal sides with vertex angle at B. So let's draw our vertex angle going vertically. So that is B, the vertex angle, 
which means these are your two base angles, A and C. It doesn't matter which one goes where. And then we know that AB will be equal to BC. B is the vertex, right? That's the one that is not equal. B is the vertex angle. If B is three times bigger than angle C, okay, three times bigger. So angle C is, I don't know how big, so we give that a variable. Angle B is three times as big, right? So that's 3x. We also have to remember that we need angle A, which is also x because A and C are equal. Okay, so now it becomes a triangle angle sum theorem where I have to add up all three of my angles and they have to equal 180. Okay, so when we have this relationship type of a problem, the smaller, right, if angle B is larger than C, that means C gets the variable and B gets multiplied. Okay, so always start with your smallest angle or side length as your variable and then build after that. So 5x equals 180, so x equals 36. So angle C and angle A are both 36 degrees. Right? How big are the angles of the triangle? I guess big means what are their sizes? So this is 36 degrees, and this is 36 degrees. 36 and 36 is, I believe, 72. And 180 minus 72 is 108. So angle B is 108 degrees. Okay, so in this triangle, if we were asked, AC would be the largest side because it is a cross from the largest angle. Oh, which is exactly what number 12 says. Okay, we have angle A and angle B and angle C. Solve for X and then list the side lengths in descending order. So that's from biggest to smallest. So to begin with, this is a triangle angle sum theorem, so we will add up all the sides. So we get x equals 7. So measure of angle A is 6 times 7, which is 42, plus 4, which is 46 degrees. The measure of angle B is 12 times 7, which I believe is a big number. Something with a 4, the 84, 84 degrees, and the measure of angle C is 6 times 7, 42, 42 plus 8 is 50 degrees. So if we want the side lengths in descending order, so that means the biggest side length, okay, the biggest side length is across from the biggest angle. So if our biggest angle is angle B, that means the side across from it is AC, right? We can't have the letter of the angle in the side that's across from it. So AC will be the largest of our sides. It's across from the largest angle B. And next is 50 degrees, which goes with angle C. So we're gonna have AB as the next biggest side or the medium side. And then since angle A is our smallest angle, BC is the side across from it. Okay, 13, we have another triangle building problem. We're given that triangle um, <clears throat> XYZ. So let's draw triangle XYZ real quick. I have no idea what it looks like, so I'm just going to draw it like that. XYZ. <clears throat> Measure of angle X is twice as large as Y. So X equals 2Ys. <clears throat> Right? And angle Z is three times as large as X. So which is the smallest of these angles? <clears throat> right? If we're going to give it a variable, what is the smallest of our angles? And that looks like angle Y would be the smallest. Right? X is larger than Y, and Z is larger than X. So let's give Y our variable. Okay? And I'm going to call our variable A to distinguish it from angle X. Okay, so if angle Y is called A, then X is twice as big as A, right? Twice as big as measure of angle Y. And Z is three times as big as X. So if X is 2A, three times as big as that is 6A. 
Okay, so it's not three times as big as angle Y, it's three times as big as angle X. So now when we set up our triangle angle sum problem, 6A plus 2A plus 1A equals 180. I believe that's 9A. So our smallest angle is going to be 20, right? Y is 20 degrees because that's your base variable. And it looks like X is going to be 40 degrees because that's 2 times 20. And Z is 6 times 20 or 120 degrees. So we have a 20 degree angle Y, a 40 degree angle X, and a 120 degree angle Z. Okay, so we always build from the smallest of your angles. That's the one that gets the variable, and then everything else is related to it. So we have one variable in our equation. Okay, those are the kind of tricky problems, but we can do them. Okay, and lastly, number 14, measure of angle FDC. That is right here, FDC is 110, and I believe maybe that's 110 degrees, right? It says measure, so surely that's 110 degrees. Um, measure of A to D to B, that's here, ADB. Right, let me change colors. ADB is 5X plus 4 is here. And then angle A is 4X minus 2. And that's up here, 4X minus 2. What is the measure of angle A? So somehow I have to make an equation so that I'm able to add up these things and right, set something equal in something else. Um, so let's see, what do I have? Not a whole heck of a lot. It would be nice, maybe, if I knew what angle B was, because if I knew angle B, then these three angles would add up to 180. Right? So we don't know what's isosceles, so we can't say that it is equal to either one of those other twos. Um, but I am noticing something here, and maybe you are also, that this has a triangle on it. Okay, and that means these lines are parallel. So angle B, angle B is corresponding to angle whatever this one's called, right? So if this is my, tra this is my transversal, Right? Angle B is equal to whatever this angle is here. And I know, right? I know that, that these ones add up to 180. So this, so this must be 70, right? Because these ones have to add up to 180. That's a linear pair. So angle B must also be 70 degrees because it's corresponding to this angle. Wonderful. Now I know that my three angles of my triangle, I can set up a triangle angle sum theorem problem, 4x minus 2 plus 5x plus 4 plus 70 equals 180. Okay, and now I have an equation that I can use to solve for x. So when I combine my like terms and I do all of my wonderful algebra, I get x equals 12. Okay, which now I can multiply or rather substitute, right back, substitute that into there. 4 times 12 is 48. 48 minus 2, that's a 2, not an A. 48 minus 2 is 46 degrees. Okay, so you have to kind of search for that relationship to figure out a correct geometric algebraic relationship before you solve for all this wonderful stuff. Okay, good luck on your test. Have a great day.